Purporting to be of the golden lineage, but too weak and sickly to be truly worthy stands the first Shardbearer boss of Elden Ring, Godric the Grafted. Ironically, even the game itself mocks him for his weakness. Despite his own announcement as Lord of all that is golden, the game immediately contradicts him, with his boss bar stating his name to be Godric the Grafted, not the Golden. Godric is a boss immediately known to the player as compensating for his lack of power. We learn from Roderica that someone is grafting those who approach Stormvale Castle. Everyone's been grafted? Grafting is the process of joining separate tissues so that they may grow together. In Godric's case, he grafts the limbs of challengers to his body, that he may grow from their strength. As his remembrance tells his story, a feeble man sought power through the grotesque act of grafting. One day we'll return together to our home, bathed in rays of gold. Godric yearned for the glory of a bygone age, hoping to return to it in a splendor of golden light. We can learn much about his golden yearning when we consider his lineage. Gideon Offnir summarizes. So, Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale. Despite being the blood of Godfrey, first Elden Lord, he's a grotesque old fool grasping for power. His castle lies upon the cliff to Limgrave's northwest, but I suspect you know that well enough already. Godric seeks the golden glory known to his blood, known to the first Elden Lord, Godfrey. But Enya, in discussing the demigods, explains how Godric is incapable of achieving this. But remember one thing. The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. Godric the Grafted was but a distant relation, the runt of the litter. His divine blood sorely diluted. Despite being of divine blood, Godric is a distant relation, with faded power. And as such, he is weak. He seeks to claim connection with Godfrey, emblazoning his axe with the figure of a beast, representing the strength of the first Elden Lord. But he is ridiculed by many of the residents of the Lands Between. Obviously, the attempted connection does not shine through. And considering his history, it's no surprise. We hear much of his pitiable story from Sir Kenneth Height who ridicules as much as relays the feats of Godric. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord? Oh, don't make me laugh. First, he hid himself amongst the womenfolk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse. And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Though you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah, I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. And Kenneth isn't making this stuff up. We get confirmation of at least some of what he says in a swords monument in Limgrave. It reads, Godric the Golden, humiliated, having tasted defeat by the blade of Mikola, now on his knees begging for mercy. So it seems like Kenneth is speaking reliably, which would mean Godric was humiliated by both Melania, the Blade of Mikola, and Radon, in addition to his sorry state of hiding amongst the women when he fled Lindell. He might have even used magic to make himself appear as a woman to really sell the ruse. After all, the Mimic's Veil item description reads, When Godric was hounded from Lindell, the royal capital, this was one of a multitude of treasures he took with him. This item lets players use FP to mimic nearby objects, so Godric could have used it to mimic the fleeing women, to really make sure he was not spotted, along with stealing plenty of other items. Ever the coward. But there's something else important about that sword's monument inscription. It refers to Godric as Godric the Golden, the same epithet as is used for Godfrey. This is another testament to his golden lineage, regardless of how diluted it may be. Maybe the Golden is Godric's proper or original title, and what he was called before he began his grafting. We do hear Morgat call him Godric the Golden. Ah, uh, Godric the Golden. If the Grafted was a title of derision that people began calling Godric later, then it makes sense that Morgat would speak of him with his original formal title. 
So Godric was originally a golden, but nonetheless he was weak, falling and failing many times, being humiliated by other demigods. Godric needed more power to assert his place as one of the golden lineage, and he found an avenue to such power through grafting. But Godric, believe it or not, was likely not the first in the lands between, or even in his family, to practice the art of grafting to grow in power. In the Altus Plateau, before the capital, we can find an Evergale named the Golden Lineage Evergale. In it is Godfroy the Grafted, another of the Golden Lineage, who, like Godric, must have felt too weak for his illustrious line. Godfroy drops the Godfrey icon, a legendary talisman depicting the Elden Lord Godfrey. The description speaks of how the ferocious warrior took the beast regent Sarosh upon his back to suppress his ceaseless lust for battle. Unlike Godric and Godfroy, who feel weak and need to increase their strength, Godfrey, the one they idolize, was such a warrior that he had to suppress his fighting urges. Once again, the difference between Godric and his lineage is shown to be painfully vast. We learn that Godfroy was put in the Everjail by ancient dragon knight Kristoff. The Knight's Ashes tell us that, after the first defense of Lindell, Kristoff earned the hero's honor of Erdtree Burial for the feat of capturing Godfroy the Grafted. The first defense of Lindell is a vague event, with our only description of it being found on another sword monument in the Altus Plateau, which reads, The first defense of Lindell, a sovereign alliance rots from within, traces yet remain of bloody conspiracy. While the rot may seem evocative of Melania, it could just be a choice of translation. It can be translated without the word rot, and it may just mean that the alliance was broken from within, though the blood reference is a direct translation. So Moog, Lord of Blood, may have been involved in this attack on Langdell, though from which side is hard to tell. Considering Godfroy was captured after the fight, it's likely this grafted one was on the attacking side. And we don't really have a clear timeline at all, so this next conjecture could be completely off base, but if this attack happened at the same time that Godric escaped the capital, then perhaps he saw his kin member fighting with the demigods, through the power of grafting. This could have been Godric's inspiration to take to grafting, to grow in power, to gain respect, and to be worthy of his name. So Godric began grafting, himself, his followers, and even his warhawks. The warhawk ashes read, Spirit of a Stormvale Warhawk the talons of which have been sliced off so that razor-fine swords could be grafted in their place. With its lord vanquished and its wings wounded, the hawk perished as it solemnly gazed at its former home. The storm is a warhawk's cradle. Godric took control of Stormvale Castle, but he did not bring the power of the ancient storm. He stands as the first major obstacle for the tarnished, picking off the weak ones and grafting them for his own power. Even taking the power of a dragon did him no good, though he could only take the head of a dragon small and long dead. And in this futile act, we can see, for one last time, Godric yearned to mirror his blood. For long ago, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, fought in the war with the dragons, facing the Storm Lord alone. And war was not all, his son Godwin befriended the dragons, becoming companion to Fortisax whose death lightning incantation features Godwin's golden lightning. In his final moments, Godric once again juxtaposed his weakness to his ancestor's strength, presenting a feeble rendition of his family's theme of draconic connection. Finally, Godric shouts for his ancestors to recognize him, then he dies yearning to return to Landell in golden glory. And one day, we'll return together to our home bathed in rays of gold. <laughs> but he could only find lordship in Stormville, and only for a time. He could not escape his weakness and his cowardice. Thus, he fell. But there is a new lord, ready and willing to take his place. With the newest patch, Lady Nefeli Lu can find her place as Lord of Stormville, recognized by the fair judging sense of Kenneth Height. Nefelilu is of lineage and possible daughter of Horalu, the warrior side of Godfrey the Golden. In this, Stormvale once again is led by a warrior of a lord, one who can summon the storm once more. And that is the end of the lore of Godric the Grafted. 
Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to stick around if you want to see more, because I will be making more lore content about Elden Ring. Let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed, or any kind of interpretation that you think isn't justified. There's definitely a lot about the first defense of Langdell that I'm not sure about, and that could use a lot more explanation and figuring out the timeline. So, hope to see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.